Yo, 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 what's going on guys? It's Hens back with another video and in today's video uh, We're gonna be doing the third and final episode of our little mini series that we created over the past few days uh, About going from zero to a million coins and in this episode We're talking about that last 500k to 500k to a million uh, Now in yesterday's video, I explained a little bit about how this this method is gonna take a little bit longer I guess time but less like time investment on the market. So for example, to make your next 100,000 coins, it might only take you 20 minutes on the market, but it might take you two to three days to, you know, go from buying the card to selling the card, if that makes sense. So this method is going to kind of talk about exactly what you guys need to do uh, in order to make that last 500k. Now, before this video gets started, if you guys have liked this series or like these videos in general, uh, drop a like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it, as well as follow my Twitch, Twitter, and Join the Discord down in the description. I love talking with you guys in, in the Discord and that's the best way to contact me is through Discord rather than uh, on YouTube because I don't always get to look at all the comments, um, but I try my best to look at them all. But, you know, Discord's definitely the best way to talk to me in my Discord channel in the link in the description. So, the, the kind of broader methods that we're going to be using to get this last 500k uh, are going to be longer uh, holding investments, which means you hold a card for a longer period of time and sell it for a little bit later. So you buy it when it's a little bit lower, hold it for you know a few days to a week and then sell it when it gets a little bit higher. Uh, the second method is talking about quality over quantity. So you know your first 500K was all about quantity, quantity, quantity. Now, now that you have 500K in the bank, you wanna go for quality because you have more coins to invest at a time and it doesn't take a big chunk, of, as much of a chunk out of your coins you know, to invest in like a big card that you sell over time. And also I want to say all the old methods, if they've been working for you in the past, they're still going to work now. So don't worry uh, if you've been really enjoying some of those old methods and you can spend a lot of time on the market, they'll work just as good for you. They'll, they'll be even faster now because you have more coins to invest uh, and you can do more trades at a time. So if you want to do those old methods, go right ahead. They still will work very well. Now, the first method that we're going to talk about are buying and selling uh, X-Factor cards. So if we come over here and we set the filter to X-Factor, mind you, I'm on PS5, but this is gonna work for any of the consoles that you guys are on. Um, you can see that X-Factors are going for about 170 to 165K. So let's just set the filter to 170 and see how many are up. So there's five up. So they're about 160 so or so K. Um, and essentially what we're gonna be wanting to do is on days where they release good packs that have a lot of player gold players in them, uh, mm -hmm. that are not 80 plus overall so like like that that pack that has 30 gold players in it uh, it's like 55k it's like the purple pack i forget what it's called i think it's like mega players pack or something um that one is the one that is going to give a lot of x factors in the market so if you see that pack come out this is a good uh, time to look at x factors um and basically what you're going to want to be doing is buying them for 10 percent less than what they're going for and again selling them for five percent over now uh, there is some snipes on some extra good X factors that you can get, but for the most part, the ones that you see here uh, are some of the cheaper ones that you're going to be able to flip. Um, and the reason that these sell, you, you might be thinking, why in earth would somebody pay 150k for Shea Theodore? Well, the answer is because they want to put them in the reroll set. Now, especially at Team of the Year, um, I think a lot of people are going to be doing rerolls. So, although I think all the fodder on the market is going to come high and everything else on the market is going to crash, I think there is a chance that X factors might stay the same or even go higher because people are going to be wanting to do that reroll set to see if they can get one of the x factors uh to trade up to a team of the year depending on how expensive they are so just keep an eye on that for team of the year if you're watching this video now write that down somewhere keep a mental note or come back to this video uh and make sure you look at x factors so yeah the method here is buy or bid so these ones have a 150k start price bid i might bid on some of these cards um and the goal is to buy them for 10 percent less than what they're going for and sell them for five percent more now like i said these aren't going to sell instantly. These might take a few days to a few, you know, maybe a week to sell. Um, but the return that you're going to get on each one of these cards is way bigger than the return that you get for, you know, 300 to 400 coins per, for, per fodder card. You're going to be making anywhere from like 10 to 30k on these cards, depending on the ones you snipe. Now, if I remove this buy now range, some of the better ones to snipe are any of the ones that are suspected to get a team of the year. So, you know, the McKinnons, the Matthews, the McDavid's, the, the Headman's. You know, the 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 Yossi's, the Makars, like those ones are really good. The Kachuk's even. Matthew Kachuk is another good one to get. Um, the fact that he's only at 175k on this card, like this card might not even be a bad price to, to you know, pick him up. But as you can see, they're not really selling for 200k right now. 
Um, although this card is way under, so this one could be a good risk if you guys are watching this video and he's still up. I'm personally not going to buy it because I don't. Th I think it's a little bit too risky before Team of the Year. But there is room to make a lot of coins on that card. So if you want to take a risk, you can make anywhere from like 15 to 20k on that card. It just might be a little bit of a longer sell, right? So I would keep an eye on that. Um, so that's the first method that, I, that I'm going to talk about here. So X Factors, as always, the rule is buy for 10% less, sell for 5% more. Now, the second method that I've been doing a lot more recently is the uh, power up icon method. So basically uh, what these icons are is, as you can see, that Henrik Sedin selling for 60K. But if we set the filter, um, how much are icons going for? They were going for about 80K a little while ago. Yeah, see, they're still going for 80K, uh, even 85K. Yeah, so around 85K. So um, that's Sedin there. Uh, sorry, it's power up icon. Sorry, I removed the filter. So this Sedin is going to be somebody that's good for me to bid on. I'll even bid on him during this video so that you guys can see exactly what I'd be doing. Now, I'm probably not going to bid win this bid because people are also doing this method, but this is a great method. If I win this card, I'm making at least like 12k coins off of him, which is crazy. Um, especially because, you know, people want to be doing that upgrade set uh, to get the Gretzky's, to get the Lemieux's, to get the, the Messier's. Um, and the way to do that is you upgrade 83 overall icons if you get, get them for the cheapest price possible and then you flip them a little bit later. So this these cards are, are great to flip with. The same way that the X Factors work, um, these ones work, people are constantly going to be in demand for them. However, I don't think that these cards are going to stay as high for, uh, you know, as long as the X Factors going into Team of the Year. I think these cards will crash a little bit just like I think the rest of the market is going to crash a little bit. But if we do win this, uh, this, this uh, Henrik Sedin right now, that's a huge win. And we make 20 to even like 50k, not 50k, so 20 to like 30k off this card, depending on how much uh, those cards fluctuate. Now, I'm going to keep an eye on this card for a little bit while I keep talking about um, some different methods. Now, the next method that we're going to talk about is called the out of packs meta method. So meta cards, if you guys don't know, are any cards that, you know, um, are like the best in their class. So, for example, the Tage Thompsons that come out, those are six foot six centers. That have great hot builds for the meta for the meta of the game meta is like the best way to play the game i guess um so what i would suggest is you know buying cards like that when they're in packs holding them and then once they go out of packs then you know okay somebody's outbidding me on this guy but i don't like that but um once they go out of packs you know you're gonna you're gonna be able to sell them for a lot more because there's not going to be as much supply on the market so for example i bought a tage thompson I think it was his 87 spreadsheet card. Um, I bought him for, I want to say, like 60K when he was in packs on the Wednesday. Um, and then he went out of packs that night. I held him and I sold him that night for 90,000 coins. So it was a 30K coin flip. So keep an eye out for the meta cards, the McDavid's, the McCars, the McKinnon's. You know, those cards that have special cards that are, you know, in packs at the time. That's when you're going to want to flip them, right? Um, and the last one that we're going to talk about is flipping MSPs. So MSPs uh, are the master set players, you know, the ones that are out this week are Forsberg, Verona, uh, and then there's two other ones I can't re I can't really remember what they are, uh, Nemich is one of them. Um, those cards, you same, math same thing as the out of packs method, you want to buy them when they're in packs and then sell them when they're out of packs and that goes for if you pack one too that's tradable, you're going to want to buy it uh, when it's in packs and sell it or you want to sell it when it's out of packs or if you pack it you want to sell it when it's out of packs so that's how i'm i went from 500k to a million um and as you can see as as i'm recording this video i'm kind of on the side you know doing bids on this card so you guys can see exactly how i'm doing it um but i don't know if i'm going to win this card because there's there's quite a lot of competition on it right now as you can see there's at least three people bidding because i lost two bids in a row which means there's at least two or three people bidding on it including me um so with that being said, that's how you're going to make your last 500k. Like I said, it's a longer hold period. Um, it's not so quick. Somebody's going to outbid me now, probably. Yeah, that's unfortunate because I get so close to winning and then somebody bids on it last second. It just makes you go crazy. But that's also how you win bids. If you guys didn't know, if you wait till like the last second, some people will give up if, you, if you're just very patient with it. I'm personally not going to give up on this card until it hits like 80k. And once it hits 80k, then I'll give up on it. But until then, I'm not going to give up on it. Anyway, if you guys did enjoy this video, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated. Um, check out my links in the description down below. I'll also put my spreadsheets uh, that you saw in the last video. I'll put my spreadsheets up on this video. Um, and if you guys are interested in, you know, coming and saying hi on Twitch, I'm going to be streaming a lot over the next few weeks. And I would greatly appreciate it if you guys stopped by. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.